Good morning. You've got me in the raw today because today we're going to be talking about one of those things that I use every day. Well, at least every day that I go out of my house and have to face people. And that would be makeup. Not many of us go uh, very long without putting some kind of makeup on our faces to face the people and the day. And so I feel because of, you know, what we talked about yesterday and all the different chemicals and stuff that are in the cleaning products of our homes. Well, guess what? I hate to be a downer, but personal care products, makeup are full of really high caustic chemicals and so that's what we're going to talk about today kind of a takeoff from yesterday um but don't worry there is hope there is a makeup line and probably more but young living has a beautiful mineral makeup line which is free of all the chemicals that are common in most of the makeup lines today in the united states and uh if you don't already know, my name is Julie Barnett, and I'm a mother of five, grandmother of nine, and I am coming to you day nine of all the oily goodness. And so um, we're talking today about the carcinogens that are in makeups in the United States. Much of what I'm going to talk to you about today, um, a lot of the chemicals that I'm going to name here, get your pencil out because hello there, uh, get your pencil and paper out so you can write these down and or the website that you can go and read this for yourself to have an idea of just what really is in all our makeup and not, not in makeup, in our lotions, in our soaps, all kinds of things. And so if we can just do a little bit at a time Time to get rid of some of these toxins outside of our homes. Hi, Christina, um, Christine. Uh, then we're doing ourselves a favor, not just ourselves, we're doing our whole family a favor. And so today I have my computer sitting here. Obviously, this is my bathroom because later I'm going to show you how I do put, apply my makeup. Um, but uh, in the United States, the laws are much different than they are in the European Union and or Japan or any of the other countries. Many of the chemicals that are allowed here in the United States in our makeup and our uh, lotions and all that stuff are banned in other places where here they are not. And so you got to ask why. But either way, we have choices. We can, you know, buy the the cheaper crappy makeup and be slathering it on ourselves and say it's okay it's a choice or we can go maybe with a, a much better line of mineral makeup that costs more but is your health worth it mine is so okay i gotta put these back on because i'm going to be reading some of this i have my computer up here in the bathroom too um it says here, carcinogens in cosmetics. If you want to write this website down, there's plenty of them. All I did was type in Google um, chemicals in makeup and, uh, you know, a slew of them came up. But I thought this was safecosmetics.org is what I um, am reading from. So if you care to care to know, it says the law governing cosmetics and personal care products are so limited here in the United States that known known cancer causing chemicals or carcinogens are legally allowed in personal care products. Some carcinogens such as formaldehyde or formaldehyde releasing preservatives are common in personal care products while others are less common but still present. Okay, that, that is just clear as a bell. Uh, what are they found in? A wide variety of the, uh, products depending upon the ingredients. So how do we avoid these things? Well, read your labels and then avoid cosmetics and personal care products that contain this stuff. I mean, it, that's the easiest way to go about it. Um, you know, I, I have to say, I am one that had to change all this. I was all in for buying the cheap makeup and, and even dollar store stuff for my family to bathe in and soap up with and, and put on their skin uh, until I started learning all this. And then it was like, oh my God, what have I done to my poor children? And now that they're older, they've had to learn to change their ways now too because of this. But anyway, better late than never. 
once you get the uh, information and the education, then it's up to you to make a decision where you want to draw your line. So health concerns. So these chemicals that we're going to be talking about, the health concerns are, and these are from our makeup. I'm trying to stick with makeup today. Cancer, endocrine disruption, dement de developmental and reproductive toxicity, bioaccumulation, and ecotoxicity. Now, I'm not sure what that one is, but I'm assuming that means the eco, the system around you and what flushes down your sink and into our water systems. Uh, bioaccumulation is what I was talking about yesterday. You know, they say that it's just such a little amount in each one of these products. But if you're putting those products on all day, every day, slathering lotions on to keep dry skin away in the winter or, you know, makeup reapplying a couple times, your liner and stuff. All this stuff accumulates in your body and your body doesn't know what to do with it. Okay, so who's vulnerable? Everybody. It says all people. So anybody who uses this kind of stuff is vulnerable to... Um, the things that can come from it. Now, it just depends if your immune system is really high or if it's weak, but I'll tell you, if you use these things for a lifetime, it's weakening every day you put them on. Okay, the regulations. Um, formaldehyde, let's see, benzene, ethyl oxide, chromium, all these things are banned in Europe and Japan, but for some reason, the United States hasn't followed suit yet. Um, so where do we find these chemicals? Let's see, let's see, where do we find those known human carcinogen chemicals? The International Agency for Research on Cancer is an intergovernmental agency and part of the World Health Organization, and its mission is to enhance collaboration in cancer research in internationally. So they're trying to look into this stuff. Uh, I don't know what the effects have been, but from that, I'm just going to go to those things that they absolutely know are carcinogenic in humans. Now, they have them classed as probably carcinogenic, possibly carcinogenic, not classified as carcinogenic yet, and probably not carcinogenic. So I'm just going for the ones that they absolutely know are carcinogenic in humans that are in our makeup and other products. So, number one that they have on here is formaldehyde. I've got to put this thing down because it's breaking my arms. Formaldehyde. We know what that is. Um, we know what it's used for. But did you know that it's in um, all your personal care products, nail polish, eyeshadows, mascaras, nail treatment, shampoo, blushes? Um, and it's used to help prevent bacterial growth. It's designed to release uh, formaldehyde slowly and constantly over time, but it's in everything. So let's see what it says. Um, I'm kind of scrolling through this, so just be patient with me. Um, it says it raises concern to exposure to formaldehyde because it leads to irritation of the eyes, nose, throat, respiratory systems. Uh, system. Uh, the standard for cosmetic prohibits this thing in Europe and Japan. Um, you could have as much as 5% in a finished product. So some of this stuff I want you guys just to go and check out yourself because otherwise this video is going to be an hour long and I don't want it to be more than 30 minutes. So um, I don't know how to say this. P-H-E-N-A-C-E-T-I-N. Phenichin. Phenichin. Um, is in different things to help stabilize the products, such as uh, facial hair bleach, color, women, uh, uh, just that's not necessarily a, um, a makeup. So I'm going to stay away from that. But it's human carcinogen. Coal tar. Coal tar is in cosmetics. Um, many cosmetics, hair dye, shampoos, dandruff, scalp treatment, red redness uh, for uh Ro Roche, I don't know how to say that. Roche, you know, when you get the red cheeks, uh, Rochea uh, treatment. It says this tar is known as a human carcinogen. Uh, it's one of the uh, first occupational exposed links to cancer. When scrotal cancer among young chimney sweeps was associated with its exposure, it's associated with cancers of the lung, the bladder, the kidney, the digestive tract. And I'll leave it there, but this stuff is in our makeup. Coal tars are complex mixture, blah, 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 something with your DNA. I, you guys go read it. Benzene. 
which is mineral oils, untreated or mildly treated. Mineral oils are derived from crude oil. That's what I was talking about yesterday. A lot of the salves and ointments and stuff we use are petroleum-based products. So even though they may have something really good that might help you breathe, they're, they're killing the quality of it by using petroleum uh, product because our body doesn't know what to do with it. It just sits there and it bogs it all down and over years of use, um, it's, it's likely to wreak havoc, although you won't even put it, you won't even think that it correlates together at all, but it does. Okay, so benzene, let's see. Um, untreated, mildly treated mineral oils known as a human carcinogen raises concerns about mineral oils that target organs such as the eyes, the skin, and respiratory system through inhalation, and it's a skin and eye um, irritant. Ethylene oxide, you know what? I, don't, I really don't even wanna go through all these. There's just so many of them. Ethylene oxide, uh, it leads uh, to cancer and leukemia. Uh, it is uh, you can inhale it, ingest it. It's a skin and eye contact and disrupts disrupts the central nervous system and respiratory systems. <laughs> Heavy metals, cardium, uh, same thing. I don't want to go into it all. Arsenic, chromium, silica. Those are the main ones that are in our makeup and um, other product lines that we use on a daily basis. So check out your shampoos. Check out, um, check out everything. Read your labels and then pick your battles where you want to start. I am allergic to formaldehyde. It is what I use to preserve. It is. It's exactly what they use to preserve dead bodies. It's a preservative in our makeup, but it's terrible. It is a horrible chemical. And you know what? It's the number, this is way off subject, number one chemical in your cars, like a brand new car, that brand new car smell full of formaldehyde. Same with carpet. Carpet, that's why so many people, they don't even realize when they get like new carpet in their house, that, you know, it's new carpet, so it's fresh and it's new. It's full of formaldehyde and many times people will start having uh, respiratory issues and different things after they've had la new carpet laid. Uh, but they never connect it to the carpet, but it's the formaldehyde because it's in such high quantity in there. Anyway, that was a side note. The good point of this is, is that of course, because I'm a rep of Young Living, they have a makeup line that is pure mineral-based, not mineral oil, mineral-based. So it's uh, completely natural products that... Um, that they carry. Um, they had such a calling for this that two years ago they acquired uh, this line from one of a young living uh, Royal Crown Diamond that's way up the line. She's been around for quite a while. She made her own line of makeup because there was such a calling for it. Everybody wanted pure makeup and they couldn't find it. I mean you can go and find some makeups that are, are pretty good but they still carry a lot of the talc and the bismuth in uh, which is some of the things that are in makeup that's not good um, in their products. And so she made her own lineup, which Young Living ended up buying and purchasing and making it a part of their line. And we were all so happy. It's wonderful. So I hope you can see this is the catalog for all the makeup. So they have your standard makeup um, from uh, eyeshadows to uh, all the different foundational colors uh, I hope I'm not too loud. I'm in my bathroom. I'm, I'm not sure. The mineral veil, they have blushes. Um, they have eyeliners. You know, when I say eyeliners, they have one eyeliner and then they have one brow thing. They don't make, uh, you know, 15 different things except in colors of people uh, because you only really need a couple. And so, but lipsticks, they got their whole line of lipsticks now. It took them a while. It took them a while to come out with these brighter colors to figure out a way that they could um, make bright colors without using, you know, bad dyes. They don't use any kind of dyes at all. And so um, most lipsticks, I mean, everything out on the market pretty much is dye related. And dyes, if you do a research on dye, uh, it's to dye for. <laughs> But anyway, they have a great line of makeup brushes. I'll tell you, I love, love, love my brushes. Um, where are they? Where is my one that I, oh, here, it's right here. It's the best brush ever. I bought them. They're expensive, but I'm telling you, I treated myself, and these are the best brushes. If you're into makeup brushes, 
um, they're really, really good line. Anyway, so we have, and we have the whole line of art skincare stuff to keep care of your skin before you apply your makeup. It helps, uh, hydrate and clean and do all that. But I just wanted to read this to you really quickly. Um, Young Living is committed to naturally de derived products formulated without any toxins. So that comes, not just their makeup line, every line they carry is non-toxic. So it's made from all natural product. So it says confidence without compromise. When you choose our mineral-based non, I don't know how to say this word, comedogenic essential oil infused makeup, you can feel good about what you put on your skin. Savvy Minerals by Young Living, that's the name of the line, is always formulated without talc, bismuth, parabens, phylates, petrochemicals, nanoparticles, synthetic fragrances, or colorants, and they never use cheap synthetic, synthetic fillers. So that, none of that stuff is in our makeup, but if you go out there, I'm mean, almost every other line, um, unless, I, I guess there may be some, I, I don't know, that don't have all of those things, but I don't think that there's one uh, other than Savvy Minerals that doesn't have all of that. So you will find pure Young Living Essential Oils within this makeup, high quality, color rich minerals, aspen bark extract, do your homework, naturally derived vegan and vegetarian friendly ingredients, cruelty free, not tested on animals. Isn't that awesome? Do a search on that. It will disgust you. The way they, it's torture to animals when they test makeup on them in their eye. It's just terrible. In fact, don't even go do it. Just trust me. It's disgusting. Seed to seal verified. So everything is verified that it's all natural preservative. All natural preservative. All earth mineral added for shimmer. Uh, all products have vegan formula except lipstick, which contains beeswax. So for some that matters. And so that's what I have to say about makeup. And so this is the makeup that I use all the time. Um, I have a whole slew of it back here behind me, but these are the ones that I use on a daily basis. Um, so this is what we're going to do today. And I hope I can get this done. Now I actually ran out. I usually wear warm number two, but I ran out of it. So I took two of ours because I have the whole line because, because I'm a rep of it. And so I have to have the whole line. And so I took warm number one and then dark number four and I mixed it together to make what I'm going to put on my face today. I hope it works. Before I do that though, I always, 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 where is it? <sighs> Orange Blossom Moisturizer. I love this stuff. I love, love, love it. And so I just put it on. I got to take these down. I put it on. And this will help the makeup stick too. But it smells so good. It's Orange Blossoms. You know what Orange Blossom Oil is? It's called Neroli. Neroli Oil. It's so good. We go to Florida every year. And years ago, before all the houses took over and all the visitors came, um, the orange blossom time was so wonderful to smell. It's very uplifting, calming uh, stuff. Anyway, so that's what this stuff is. So I put that on. And then we have, I don't know, how can I say that? Let's see, magnifying primer. So we have a primer. And so I just, I don't use this all over my face. I just take a dot of it. I'm trying to see, I have, you guys should just see what, how I have this set up. I just put it here and here so that my makeup will hang on a little bit longer during the course of the day. And so this is like a little primer that I use. I had already washed my face earlier. Um, so I put that on my eyes. That's a primer that we have. And then I usually, we'll take, so I have some of the, here, I got it in the cap. I dump it out in a cap usually. This is a lot though. So, and then I take, we have this spray. It's called the misting spray. It just helps your brush. I just literally squirt it. Actually, you know what I do? This is what I really do. I spray my hand because I don't like it to get too bad. And then I just go like that. 
And then I take my stuff and I just dab it in there, tap it off. I got to go away from you guys a little bit. And then I just start putting it on in little swirls around. Mm-hmm. With that orange blossom, it smells so good. I love it. A little more. Oh, I was telling you about the camera. So I couldn't figure out how I was going to do this and show you guys. <laughs> so I have green tape all over my camera tape to things. So I really don't even see myself. I hope you guys see me. <laughs> the only thing that's not covered is um the camera. Okay, so I'll tell you what. I am not one that's like a professional here at all. And usually, if you're like me, I'm always running. <laughs> In fact, uh, you know, it's Thursday, and if anybody knows me, Thursdays I go to the nursing home. And so I have to be there by 11 o'clock. It's 20 minutes away. So that's all I do with the foundation. I put it on like that. Okay, so that's done. Then, which one do I want to wear? They have bronzers. They have all kinds of stuff. But I think it's a little, uh, my skin's getting a little bit um, light, not so much tan because of the sun being gone. So I'm starting to use, it's called, it's Summer Love. It's a little lighter than the bronzer. So I start to use that. So what I do is I just tip it over and get a little bit in the cap. And then I take... And I just do that. I dab it in there like that. And then I just brush it on. Maybe not enough. Let me get a little bit more. And it is loose powder, so you have to get used to using loose powder. I end up with it all over my sink, so I just sit there and <laughs> I dab off my sink with the, with the brushes as I use them. So there's that. I don't know. Can you see a difference already? I hope so. And I put a little here. I'll do the hair later. You guys don't get to see that. <laughs> okay. I think that's good. And as you, you know, I've got 60 year old skin, so I have to spend some time. Uh, we have a whole product line, which I use. It's the orange, blo orange blossom. Uh, there's, there's, uh, the moisturizer and then there's a really really nice soap and that goes so well with my skin uh, we have other soaps too as i talked about yesterday but um i really do love the orange blossom for my older skin and it makes it feel like a baby's butt when i'm done washing with it so i really do love it okay so there's that i am not one to do a ton of makeup uh, you know, unless I'm going to some big event or someplace where I really have to um, dress up or something. But I'm going to show you just a little bit because we also have the, a lot of our um, eyeshadows and stuff come in little tubs that's loose powder. Well, they, they came out with this recently. Oh, my God. This was like the best thing since apple pie. So, okay, I'm going to just use a little bit of this and go in here a little bit. For older people, see how my eyes kind of bag? They kind of bag down there, and I don't like that. So you kind of fake it out. So you bring the color, the darker color, you bring it up a little higher, and it kind of gives the illusion that it's not so baggy. <laughs> because that's a problem we all have. Hey, Jinx Jervis, good morning. How you doing up there with the kids? Jinx is my daughter's mother-in-law and she's been staying up there with the kids for a little while visiting her and her husband okay so here we got it in the crease and i don't know what color that is it's kind of mauve i use that and now i just i'm this bad i know i should be you know what i'll be proper usually i just use the same darn brush but i'll change brushes for you guys and i'm going to use this lighter color right here to go up above the brow just to give see how it lightens it up and it just gives enough that it looks like my, well, I need to tweeze my eyebrows. Sorry, you guys get this this way. But anyway, that kind of opens it up a little. And then you can also, you put a little light color right here. If you're, if you're young, you probably don't have these same issues. But uh, as you grow older, you have to do what you got to do to make your eyes look bright. And so I'm going to put a little light stuff here too just to open it up. Not a lot. Like I said, I really am not real big on, on, oh, there, got one on. 
Uh oh, unfortunate Google Play services. Open it again. I hope that you guys are still on board. I can't tell. Okay, so that's that. And then this is their um, their brush here too. I can't see past that thing, so I hope you can see it. I love this brush. I never use this end of the brush though. I use it to scoop out <laughs> some of the uh, other makeup. That's what I use it for. But I take a little piece of paper because I don't like it too thick. And so right now we're gonna do, it's called Multitasker. It's a dark brown. And this is what I use on, I'm tipping it upside down so I can get some in the lid. Everything I do is mixed in a lid. I just keep it there. But see, there's just a little bit. And then again, I take my spray. This stuff's got something that helps it be a little more sticky. It's water, basically water. But then I, I, I get my brush wet because I like a little, not soaking wet, but I like it damp when I put this stuff on my eyebrows. And then I have my piece of paper here and I just dab it off a little bit because I don't want it crazy. Hey, Nancy Janky, I have never met you. But I am your cousin somewhere down the line, and it's nice that you're on board. How you doing this morning? Okay, so we're putting the makeup on. I always start a little down deeper because I like it to look like it. I've got an angle, and then I work my way up. I never go like this except at the very end. So we always go up. You go with the same way of your eye, your um, brow, and then over to the side. I pull it down like that. It doesn't take a whole lot, but... And that way it looks a little feathery, like it, like it's, you know, naturally done like that. And then I just line it off. Does that one look better? I hope so. Okay, I'm going to just dab it again. And I'm going to get a little more. And then I'm going to put it over on this side too. See, it's so, look at how opposite it is now. So I might take a little bit off of that one. But in the end, I'm going to have a nice eye. So we start out, start out low. And then I work my way up because I really, because of my age, like I said, we have to kind of fake our eye. Yep. And bring that up over into this corner so it looks like I have a nice arch. I didn't do that up here, did I? And so we just have to do that as you get older. It's just the way it is. But it makes it look a lot nicer when you do that. Okay, does that look even to you guys? Just give me a thumbs up if it does. <laughs> okay, so that's Multitasker, which is a dark brown, loose powder. But it's so easy to use. It's just really simple. You know, when I first started using it, my daughter had to really make me use it. Because I thought, oh my God, it's so dark on my face. It's just way too much for me. But every time I go out, people say, oh, your makeup, it's so nice. You always do such a good job. You saw how fast it took me. It takes no time at all, really, once you get doing it. Okay, so I already have this one open. This one is called uh, Jet Setter. Jet Setter is the black eyeliner. Now, I used to always use the dark brown. And then I was told by a couple people who are more into makeup than I am that use the black because the black really outlines older eyes much better but you don't want to cake it on you you want to just use a hint of it so again spray and then i pick some up you can do this dry too if you're into the dry and i dab it off on the paper and then i take this and i just get a little bit kind of slap it around a little bit and then I'm going to, I hope you guys can see it while I'm doing it because I have to look in the mirror too so I do I pull my eye just a little bit but I stay as close to my eyelashes as I can. I don't want a big heavy line. Now, it doesn't mean that I don't always get what I want because it just depends on how well I do that day. So I'm just, it's just a little damp. It's not really a wet, but it's not dry. Okay, how's that? And you see, it doesn't, you know, people say, oh, I've, and I was, I am, I'm telling you, I could show you a drawer full of pencils. I have been a pencil person forever until we got this line of makeup. And then I was determined to get rid of the crap makeup and get this. And so I had to learn. And that's okay. I'm not too old to learn something. Are you? No. 
Even this, look, people say, I see all the girls do this. And they put a little tweak on the end of it, just a little tweak. And most of us older ones, we have a natural line right there because when we smile, <laughs> you know, we have those lines. So you just follow one of those lines out. And it just, I think, I don't know, what do you think? I love it. I just do. And it's so simple. Now, some people don't like to put liner. Oh, that was a too much. So when you get too much, you just dab it off on your paper. But I like to put on, because I look, I feel like if you don't put liner underneath, your eyes look bald. <laughs> and because I have very thin eyelashes down there, but I try to get real close, just close enough that it, that it you know, highlights it a little bit. Maybe a little too much, but that's okay. You guys get what I'm saying, right? Okay. There. And then you bring it right up to the corner and off that side thing again. Make sure they come up and they match. Okay, I see you guys posting, but I'm going to have to do this to see. Um, cousin, how many good times with Ruth and Bud, Bud growing up? That is so good to know. That is awesome. You know, I barely knew my dad. <laughs> you know, he was 20, I was 21 when he passed away, and I was just getting to the age that, uh, you know, I could get to know him. But that's okay. I'd love to hear some memories of yours. Uh, looks great. Oh, thank you, Amber. Okay, so that's what I do for my eyes, basically. That's just about it. And so I don't do a whole lot more. Um, I do have, you know, again... They make lipsticks. They make lipsticks with oils. This is one of my favorites. This is one of the first lipsticks. Now, I'm not sure this is quite as kosher as the new makeup line because this is not uh, from the Savvy Makeup line. But I love this stuff. I love it. Um, they also have... Um, oh, that's not... Okay. They also have... And now I'm getting used to this stuff. A mascara. Our mascara has lavender oil in it. Do a check on lavender oil and eyelashes. You'll be surprised. There's a reason that it's in there. And so it has lavender oil, but it kind of makes it a wet mascara. So I'm still trying to master getting this stuff on my eye without blobbing it. Uh, so, and because I have very thin eyelashes over in this corner, both corners, I hardly have any at all. And so I really have to work at that. So here we go. Let's see. And I know you're supposed to go like this. Oh, uh, you know, everybody hangs her. Oopsie, there I go. But I put it on. I usually just blink it on because otherwise I do what I just did, which is blop. Okay, so we're just going to do it like that. I'm really not nervous in front of you guys. It's so funny. I'm doing this so, but if I don't do a perfect job, you got got to understand. Okay, so where's my other brush? Where is, oh, here it is over here. Okay, so they have this fancy, fancy, dandy, blah, you know, whatever this is. So you can blink out some of the, and stretch out your eyelashes so that they are all nice and neat. Which, honest to God, I don't usually do. I just put this stuff on and I'm running out the door. So, unless I'm really trying to fuss to be beautiful for my husband some night, you know. Uh, but just on a daily, see, I did blotch it right there. On a daily basis, I don't bother. Okay, so here we go. And this is the way I was told to do it like this, but I seem to dig my eye. Okay. So you have to go back and listen to the first part of this video to why I'm doing this makeup and why. This makeup is so much better than the stuff. I am putting this in my eyes, near my eyes, around my eyes, and on my skin, which is some of the most delicate skin on our bodies. And so I don't want any of the crap carcinogens on my skin. And so even though this stuff costs a little more, people think, you know, and I'm just going to be straight with you. One of these, although look at, there's so much in one of these, and it's a good size. It, um, Let's see. This is the eyeshadow size, and this is the foundation size, and there's a lot in it. But I, I believe this is $44. But I'm telling you, you go to a matte counter, or I can't even think of other lines of makeup, to be honest, because I never really got into those. 
Um, but I know that they have several makeups out there that are that expensive and more, and they have all the crap in them. And so we don't want to use it. Take care of ourselves, ladies. And if we do that, we can take care of our families. And we'll be here for them. We'll look good, but we will be here for them for a long term. So start with yourself and cleaning up yourself. Clean up the house. Get some of the toxic chemicals and the crap out. Um, and, and we'll just be so much better off. Uh, the families will be too. Okay. I hate to preach to you. I don't want to preach to you because I know how hard it is to change over from things and, you know, get rid of the stuff and maybe have to spend a little more. But I'm telling you, you are worth it. If you're not worth it, who is? Okay, so I screw these back on, throw them in here. Now I want some lipstick. So they have lip glosses. They have several different ones. They have several different lipsticks also. But what I like to do, this is a newer one. I just brought her up here. And I put the lipstick on. There's another one I like, but it's in my purse. That's a little darker than this. When I smile, it's the janky lip. Janky is my, my maiden name. When I smile, I don't have any lips. They go away. So I need to at least accentuate them a little bit just to get them to, to show up. I don't know how many of you have that. This is uh, another one. I usually use the darker, uh, like a reddish color, but I liked my lips to shimmer. And these are all infused with oils too. Okay, I think that's the finished product. Sometimes I even go like this because I like a little shimmer on my cheeks. Yep, I double dose like that. It's my makeup. I can do what I want. Just to give a little shimmer. Oh, there's one more thing. There is one more thing. Um, is the um, veil. When you're going out and you want to look really, really nice. Um, this is not one of our brushes, but it's here. Uh, and you want to accentuate certain parts of your face more than others. You take that mineral veil. People think, what is that for? I did when I first started. But you take it and you highlight a right above your eyes, above your cheekbone, really. This is how I do it. Now, a professional might say, what are you doing? But I like it. It just opens my face up, makes it bright. And I think you're supposed to use a darker color right here, but I like to use the lighter color. I think it gives my face a little more depth and then maybe some right here. Okay, that's that. Does that look better than when we began? I hope so. <laughs> um, the old folks are getting a, a pretty palette today from me. And uh, I really appreciate all of you coming on. I hope this has been beneficial. Please go uh, to that website that I gave you at the beginning and look up some of those things that are in uh, your everyday products. If you are, I don't want to even say the name of products because I'm not going to cut any down, but I'm telling you, if you look on the backs of them or, or go online and you can do a search for different products and it'll tell you how carcinogenic they really are. Um, there was a website that we were using for a while. I can't remember what it was, but I heard they've been compromised somehow by the different companies. But uh, if somebody wants to post that up there, Amber, if you're still on here, uh, post that website. They can download that app and you can see, it'll tell you how carcinogenic every single thing in your house is uh, by taking a picture of the, um, oh, what's that thing called? Uh, you know, like the, there's a QR code on the back of everything. You take a picture of that and it will go in and it will tell you how carcinogenic it is. So that's it for today. I hope it's been helpful. This is day nine of all of my favorite things. And so um, tomorrow's the last day. And I'm not sure what I'm doing because there's a, a few other things that I use every day, but I have to choose which one is going to be the best. So I hope you'll go back and, and listen to this and watch it and, and gain some insight from it. Otherwise, you have a great day. Love you all. Bye. It won't stop because it's all taped up. If you guys just don't do this, I'm going to take the tape off. <laughs>